Pastor Jason here with another daily Devo. And I say daily, but that's a very loose term right now because we've been missing a couple days and I'm sorry for that. Um, But the good news is, is that you don't need me to read the word of God to you. I'm just as a, I'm just here to kind of be like a supplement that comes alongside as you're reading the word of God. And that doesn't mean, just so you know, I'm going to stop doing these videos because I actually love doing them and I love seeing the fruit of it as people comment on the videos and as they share them, that God is using these to uh, impact their life. But I'm just want to know, I just want you to know that you don't need me because you have the very spirit of God inside of you. And you have the word of God. It's the spirit of God that makes this word alive. And so it's my prayer that as we do these videos, that you're also praying and reading God's word on your own. And that the word of God is becoming living and active in your life. And it's taking out the things that don't belong there and producing the fruit that does belong as you walk in faith and uh, faithfulness and obedience to God. And so with that, we're going to actually, um, we're going to read. Proverbs, uh, not Proverbs, Psalms chapter 11. (laughs) And this is a Psalm of David, and it's about our refuge in the Lord. I mean, this world, there's a lot of things happening in this world. There's a lot of influences that try to penetrate our lives and, and our minds and our thoughts, and they try to wage war on us. The Bible says that the enemy is, is at work to try to go around seeking whom, whom, whom he may devour. And we're called to resist the devil, to resist the enemy, meaning that we have the authority not to allow him to conquer our lives. And David, in his Psalms, he writes a, a lot of them about taking refuge and the Lord being our strength. And so as believers, we have this power that backs us. We have God who says, I am for you and not against you, who backs us and we can walk in authority that we are children of God, that God is for us, not against us, that God's promises are yes and amen in our lives. And so David's writing this and he says this, he says, I have taken refuge in the Lord. Now, where do we turn when all the world is caving in? Where do we go when when it seems like uh, just in our own personal life, I'm not talking, there's two different viewpoints here. There's there's the viewpoint of, of, of macro, meaning everything that's happening in the world, all the chaos, all the rumors of wars, the destruction, the the, the Ohio situation, if you're following that, all, and, and Palestine, Ohio, with all that junk and gunk that's happening over there. Where do we turn when all the world is turning, turning to chaos? Well, and then also on the micro level in our own personal lives. Like it's easy when things are happening far away to say, God, you're still God on the throne and I turn to you. But what about when it turns personal in our life? When, when things start caving in on us, when we're surrounded by like impossible situations, like what do we do? David here says, I have taken refuge in the Lord. In all situations of my life, I turn to you, God. When the mountains are falling into the sea and the world is shaking all around me, you are my strength. I have taken refuge in you. It doesn't matter what I face, whether it's on the, on the grand scale or on a little scale, the Lord is my refuge. I have taken refuge in you. I haven't turned to other things. See, that's what happens in our life. Oftentimes we turn to other things, other people's advice, the best opinions of man. But David right here, King says, I have taken refuge in the Lord. He is my strength. And then he goes on to say this, because I have taken in refuge in the Lord, how can you say to me, escape to the mountains like the birds? How can you tell me to run to other things? How can you tell me to flee? For look, the wicked string bows, they put their arrows on bowstrings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? He says, how can you say these things to me? Like, I have taken refuge in the Lord. It doesn't matter what you say to me because the Lord is my strength. He is my salvation. So you can tell me to flee like a bird. You can tell me that the enemy is coming to shoot arrows at me and I'm I'm the righteous man. He's going to aim from my heart. You can tell me those things, but it doesn't matter because I have taken refuge in the Lord. Say what you will. God is my strength and my salvation. I don't need to be afraid. I don't need to fear. I don't need to run. That is what David is saying there. And we as believers can do that too. When we have put our faith and our trust in the Lord, we can say, you can say whatever you want. You can tell me to run to the hills. You can tell me to bury my head in the sand, but I'm not going to do any of those things because the Lord is my salvation and I stand on him alone. Say what you will. I will prove you wrong because God is my strength and my shield.
That's what David's saying here. Make all the boasts you want. Make all the, the empty, wordless claims you want. My faith is in God. And then he goes, he says this. He says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord, his throne is in heaven. And get this, get this. He says, his eyes watch. He sees all. He's like, God is, God is in his holy temple, right? There's a place where God is dwelling with man. And we are the temple of God. God's spirit is inside of us. There's a place where God is dwelling with man. And it's right here inside of me. The Lord is in his holy temple. And he says his throne is in heaven. He's far above everything too. So he's transcendent. He's outside of time and space, wars, pollution, whatever it is that you're fearing about. He's outside of that. But he's also imminent. He's right here inside of me. He's in both spots. And his eyes are watching. There's nothing that he is missing. As I walk through this world, I have that promise. God's eyes are watching. It says that, the old song says that if his eyes are on the sparrow, then his eyes are on me. He sees all. He tells that to Job in the book of Job. He says, Job, do you see when the mountain goat is given birth? He says, I do. And then Matthew, he would say, how much more are you more valuable than the birds of the air? and the grass of the field that your heavenly father won't take care of you. He says his eyes are watching. His eyes are watching. He's seated in heaven. He's also imminent. He's in my heart and he's watching me. And he goes on to say this, the Lord examines the righteous, but, the, but he hates the wicked, the ones who corrupt, the ones who destroy, the ones who are oppressing. He hates wickedness. He hates it. And he says, and those who love violence, he, and then uh, Paul, uh, Paul, not Paul, David says, let him rain burning coals and sulfur on the wicked. What a terrible judgment. He says their end will come. God hates wickedness. God hates wickedness when it's done to you, when it's done to others. God abhors wickedness. It leaves a foul taste in his mouth and he hates it and he's going to deal with it. But he goes on to say this, for the Lord is righteous. He's righteous. Everything he does is righteous. Everything he does, everything he says is righteous. The Lord is righteous. He is right. His love, he loves righteous deeds. He loves it when we act in righteousness, when we walk according to his ways. He loves it. So there's judgment for the wickedness, but the righteous get this reward. And this is what he says, the upright will see his face. That we have that promise. As we walk through this world, there's going to be times of tribulation. There's going to be times of trials. There's going to be circumstances that seem impossible. But, the, but take refuge in the Lord no matter what people tell you, no matter what people do. And you will see that God is both imminent, meaning that he's right now. He's here now. He's in me. He's also transcendent, meaning that he's holding this whole world and everything in it together. And that you can take comfort knowing that his eyes are watching you and nothing is gonna, gonna make you slip or fall. He will uphold you because that's what he says. He says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. And God will deal with the evil in the world. God will. He hates it. He hates wickedness. He doesn't condone it. The bad things that happen, God will deal with it. But as you walk faithfully in the ways of the Lord, just as the Lord is righteous, you remain righteous in what you do. There's this guarantee that God will sustain you all the way and you will see his face. You will see God at work in your life and when you cross over into the eternal life with him. That's the promise of God in your life today. Be blessed.